This is a $35 computing machine known as a Raspberry Pi 4 and guess what? It runs Ubuntu 19.10 GNOME Desktop Edition. Hey what's up guys, my name is KSK. In this video, I will show you how to install Ubuntu 19 a GNOME Edition on Raspberry Pi 4. This is going to be a step-by-step -step installation guide and by the end of this video, you will be able to successfully learn to install Ubuntu GNOME Desktop on your Raspberry Pi 4. I will also show you how to overclock Raspberry Pi 4 to maximum clock speeds up to 2GHz which improves the speed of Ubuntu. Now before getting into the main parts of the video, if in case you are the new viewer of this channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and consider hitting the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. For those who don't know what is Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 4 is one of the fastest and latest ARM computer which replaces your desktop or laptop. It is a small debit card sized portable computer that can be used for personal computing. It has the fastest ARM Cortex A72 quad core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a brand new gigabit Ethernet port, USB Type C port for power supply, and more. That being said, I'm moving on to step number one. Go ahead, open your favorite browser. Then the first link will gonna take you to the official website of Ubuntu where you need to download the image file for Raspberry Pi. Now look for Raspberry Pi and it will show the list of versions available for different models of Raspberry Pi. Now in this video, I will choose Ubuntu 19.10 for my Raspberry Pi 4 which will be supported for another few more months. You can also choose the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS release for your Pi. Go ahead, choose the 64-bit edition, then it's going to start downloading Ubuntu Server Edition. So don't worry, we're going to install the GNOME desktop environment on the top of Ubuntu Server after booting up the Raspberry Pi. Now open the second link, which will take you to another website uh, where you need to download the Abelina Etcher. So this tool helps in creating a bootable SD card for Raspberry Pi 4. Once it's done downloading all of the files, uh, place it somewhere on your desktop for easier navigation. Now go ahead, install Balina Etcher on your Windows PC. Once it's done installing Balina Etcher, extract the Ubuntu image using any extractor. So in this case, I'm going to use the Avindraw extractor. Once it's done extracting, you will see a new folder that contains Ubuntu image file which is around 2.7 gigs in size. That being said, I'm moving on to step number 2, creating bootable SD card. Now go ahead, connect your SD card to the computer. I recommend a 16 gigs or higher class 10 SD card that gives a decent read and write speeds. Now format the SD card with FAT32 file system. Now in this case, I am going to use SD formatter that formats the SD card properly and prepares for creating a bootable drive. Once it's done formatting the SD card, open Balina Etcher. Here choose a select image option and look for the image file that we have extracted. Then choose the drive letter, so make sure you have selected the proper drive letter for the SD card. Then click on flash to start creating a bootable SD card with Ubuntu. So sit back and relax, the process will take some time depending on the writing speeds of SD card. Once it's done, I will be right back with you guys. Now as you can see it has successfully completed the flashing process. Now go ahead and remove the SD card and connect back to computer. Now open my computer and the SD card will be displayed as system boot. 
Now inside the system boot folder, look for the file named config.txt and open it using Notepad++. I'm gonna go ahead and overclock my Raspberry Pi 4 a CPU and a GPU to the maximum frequencies by writing these lines. If you're doing or overclocking the Raspberry Pi, make sure your Pi has a proper CPU cooler or heatsink installed. Also, make sure your power supply is capable of producing 4 volts or higher. Otherwise, the Raspberry Pi 4 will be stuck at boot loop. So this overclocking process is completely optional. If you are a beginner, you can use it with a default clock speeds without any problem, unless if you know what you're doing. Now in this case, these lines will boost the CPU to maximum 2GHz and a GPU to 600MHz. Now once it's done writing these lines, save the changes. Now moving on to step number 3, configuring Ubuntu. Now at this point, I'm gonna go back to the system boot folder of SD card and then I'm gonna enable the SSH upon booting. So basically when Raspberry Pi 4 boots up, it uses the command line user interface. So I don't want to connect to a monitor at this time, but in your case, you can connect to a monitor. Enabling SSH is completely optional, so it's up to you to decide if you want to connect your Raspberry Pi remotely. So to enable SSH, inside the system boot directory, highlight the address bar from the top and type a CMD to open a command prompt from the current working directory. Then type echo right angle then backslash ssh to enable ssh by default so this way i can log into a raspberry pi 4 remotely within my local network now go ahead eject the sd card and put it inside raspberry pi 4 you can connect to monitor keyboard mouse power supply and ethernet cable for internet connection once it's done connecting all the things, turn on your Raspberry Pi 4. Wait for a few minutes, the first boot will take around 2-4 to four minutes. Now on my Windows computer, I'm gonna go ahead, open the command prompt and connect to my Raspberry Pi 4 using SSH. Now keep in mind, Windows 10 or higher is having an SSH command installed by default. Now if in case you don't find it, you can use a third-party application called PuTTY to connect to Raspberry Pi remotely. To connect to Raspberry Pi 4 remotely using SSH, type SSH Ubuntu at the IP address of the Pi assigned by your Wi-Fi router. You can find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi by logging into Wi-Fi router or use any advanced IP scanner. Then press the return key and accept the authentication and type password as Ubuntu. By default, the username and password is set to be as Ubuntu. Now your Raspberry Pi 4 will ask you to change the default password. Go ahead, update the new password. Now as you can see the password has been successfully updated. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect back to Raspberry Pi 4 and this time I have to enter the new password to log in into Raspberry Pi. Now at this point I have successfully logged into Ubuntu running on Raspberry Pi 4. In your case, if you have connected to monitor, you don't need to use SSH for remote connection. So you can directly type the commands from your keyboard connected to a Raspberry Pi. Now type a sudo apt-get update to update all of the repositories. Once it's done, type sudo apt-get upgrade to upgrade the system. So this will take some time depending on the speed of internet. So make sure your Pi is connected to Ethernet and has a proper internet connection to download all the software updates. Now at this point, we have done updating the Ubuntu system. It's time to install the desktop environment on Raspberry Pi and more specifically the GNOME desktop flavor. To do so, type sudo apt-get install ubuntu-gnome-desktop so this will install the latest gnome desktop edition on your raspberry pi 4 you can also try different flavors of ubuntu by typing these commands keep in mind this will require a faster internet connection to download all of the files 
So sit back and relax and don't interrupt anything. Now once it's done downloading, I go ahead and restart Raspberry Pi 4 using this command. That's it, now we have successfully installed Ubuntu 19 a GNOME Edition on Raspberry Pi 4. Now keep in mind, booting into Ubuntu GNOME will take some time, it's around 3-5 to five minutes. Don't worry if it's stuck at a blinking the cursor, so just wait until it boots into the lock screen. Now as you can see we have successfully booted into the lock screen. Now go ahead and log in into your Raspberry Pi using your password. As you can see guys, Ubuntu GNOME looks fantastic on Raspberry Pi 4 and guess what, I have screen recorded this footage that you're watching right now right from the Raspberry Pi which is amazing. Now this is it, Ubuntu GNOME 19.10 is successfully running on Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind overclocking may improve the speed of a desktop and make sure your Pi has a CPU cooler or heatsink installed. Although it doesn't seem to be a major difference in terms of speed after overclocking. Anyway, you can use the Ubuntu desktop on Raspberry Pi 4 for coding very easily. So I have written some Java code and it works super fine. That's pretty much it. Let me know guys what do you think about it. If in case this video helped you, like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and consider hitting the bell icon to get notified to see more videos. So thanks for watching, this has been KS Gerail and I will catch you in my next video. Yeah, I can never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right, yeah